Hello and welcome to this episode for Electric Pages. Today we're here at Nuremberg Embedded World 2025 and it's been one hell of a show. Today we're at the Avnet Silica stand and I'm joined by a very good friend, Martin, from Avnet Silica. It's a pleasure to meet you. And we've met before, definitely. Absolutely. We absolutely, absolutely, absolutely have. Yes. Right, fantastic. <laughs> so, before we dive into what looks very exciting about Windows 11 and IoT, tell the audience who you are, what you do, and what you like to do in your free time. Okay. So my name is Martin Drossen. I'm the director for embedded solution and software at Avnet Silica. This is a European role. Yep. And I'm responsible really to, to compile all the solutions and help the customers to build the solution with our hardware, with our supplier uh, and software partners together. Here also with Microsoft, for example. Now also bringing this new world in, uh, in the industrial uh, space with Windows on ARM. You know, everybody knows Windows on the PC, x86. Yep. Nobody, but it's Windows and ARM is really now a new, a new um, hype that we can see also not in, on, in the, on consumer already there huh, with the new laptops on, on Qualcomm ARMs. It's really great. And now we see this in industrial space. And this is also what I do in my free time, in fact. Uh, oh, uh, no, we've got one of these engineers. <laughs> oh, here we go. He does, he does his job in his free engineers. time. We are engineers. We are engineers. But that's so, how we live. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, yes, fantastic. Absolutely. So, Windows is, is a very interesting platform. It's, yes. it's a platform that most people know as a personal computing platform. You do your typical operating system stuff, word processing, Excel, that kind of thing. And so we, it has been in IoT in the past sort of like maybe five, six years, I'd maybe, that's even more, it's even longer. Yeah, longer than that, but, but it's not something that comes to, to mind for many. So yep. what would you say is the biggest challenge that Windows faces as an IoT platform on things like x86 architectures? I think it's exactly the point you just yeah. mentioned. Yeah. Everybody thinks, oh yeah, Windows, this is, this is the consumer side, the home, yeah. the gamer, and uh, the, the word processing. Yeah. No, but Windows also has the side of the IoT, the embedded yeah. uh, world, yeah. the industrial world. Yeah. And embedded means that we have a lot of systems in your daily life, and I'm sure you're facing Windows industrial IoT mm. um, 10 times a day, but you don't know that's Windows behind or Windows inside. This yeah. is the word embedded comes from. So you have in the ticketing machine, you have in the cell yeah. uh, ATM machine, yeah. you have everywhere, right? you have uh, Windows inside. So Microsoft uh, producing a very special so solution on Windows based on the standard Windows uh, solutions, but especially with industrial features for the industry. This is Windows IoT. So really a, a great solution for industrial uh, solutions uh, for, for this world. And, and and typically these things do run on x86, x, yeah. x86 yeah. architectures. Yeah. So how, why why is it that we're moving to ARM and why is Windows also supporting that move? Glad you asked, because this Perfect. is exactly the point we're talking here about. Because everybody, and also in this, in, especially in industry, it's x86 yeah. nearly only. Yeah. On the consumer side, we can see now the move to ARM already uh, quite quite a lot. Apple, why? Well, Apple M1s, that exactly. kind of thing. Yeah. Exactly. Everyone's going ARM. And, yeah. it, that's also the idea. Huh? So, uh, also Intel AMD, of course, x86 uh, world, uh, very, very well known. And also on the power, but now this is exactly the problem on the power performance, so power per watt. Yeah. So, Qualcomm now, for example, here in this world, we see, we show Qualcomm uh, as a totally different approach with the ARM. It's much better from the performance side, it's much lower in power. We have an AI engine. Everybody knows AI engine from, from the mobile phone. Huh? It's AI engine inside for, for a decade, but not on the industrial side. But now we are ready with this AI hype. Everybody wants to have in the industrial side the AI engine locally on the edge as well. So this is exactly what Qualcomm on their platform brings. It's, it's quite interesting how you mentioned about performance per watt, because if you want to have the most powerful processor in the mm. whole world, mm -hmm. you would go X64, mm -hmm. some kind of yeah. thread ripper or something yeah. like that. You know, it's yeah. a huge, huge yeah. CPU. But even though it's the most powerful in terms of performance per watt, exactly. it would be probably one of the worst. And so this is where these ARM solutions come in. So we've got a Qualcomm setup here. So can you just guide us through what's actually going on in this setup? Yeah. So we have different ARM setups or Windows and ARMs. This is the consumer version. This is an ARM uh, as well. It's a Qualcomm. It's Xlite. Uh, book from the Surface. Hold, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah. This is a, this is a Windows ARM yes. laptop? Yes, of course. This is a Windows ARM laptop, yeah. Yeah. When, sorry, sorry, when did yeah. these come out? Oh, it's already out. Uh, for uh, sorry, this months. Is, I've never heard of this. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah, oh, right. Full, full uh, Windows. Uh, no, you, can, you can buy them. Right? That's, that's, oh, my uh, goodness. I, I've never. Qualcomm. 
So to, to, just, Lawrence, just, just to make sure I'm not completely, <laughs> just to make sure I've not been under a cave for the past year. <laughs> no, no. Is this a, please tell me it's a relatively new thing. So this wingless and arm sneaked in in the in the consumer world, and it's so compatible that you nearly do not recognize that it's really running on ARM. You can run your x86 code on this machine without any changing. Seriously? It's emulated uh, on it. Of course, oh, the blimey. drivers, you need to have the drivers ARM compiled still there. And, so and, and just to be clear, this is a, a Windows 11 distribution. Yes. It's a consumer version. So we're talking about exactly. desktop, exactly. Word applications. Yeah. And, yeah, everything. And that's what that is. It was this, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So this is really the the, the standard Windows uh, running, and you can, can buy it like that, exactly, so, yeah. I didn't even know this existed. But you have a, a <laughs> much longer battery life, of course. Wow, well, this is the thing. How long does that battery last? Points. So, I did uh, my, my own uh, uh, test because uh, I streamed uh, uh, streaming a lot, mm. and uh, I did 4K streaming, and I uh, was able to stream uh, two, two days, one night, uh, non-stop with one battery, so. Of course, it depends on the display brightness, but uh, yeah. Two days. Yeah, yeah, two days. So that's oh, quite cool. Two days. Yeah, it's 4K cool. streaming. Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. You know, you know, you know when Windows stops working and it goes BSOD, right? Yeah. My brain's just done that. <laughs> so exactly. Two, two days on 4K I, streaming. I have, I have another another um, ID. Because now we switch the the picture here yeah. to this to this. Um, Development board. This is the yeah. development board from Qualcomm. Uh, this is, to be clear, this is running Windows as well, as, exactly. a, as an IoT distribution. This is the screen that is purely Windows 11 uh, standard uh, enterprise. Yep. But now, this is passive cool. It's not active cooling. Oh, please, this is blowing my mind. But uh, now, test test the, the heat. Let's have a look. That's absurd. And what do you think? 30 that's, degree, not even. I would say that's a comfortable. Yeah. 33, 33, 30, 30, 30, 30. 30. You're running full blown Windows on. Of course, there's no no big uh, load in now, but uh, this is this. But, that, but that's the point. point. It's that, 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 that's because the point that is a consumer yeah. Yeah. The operating system. Ah, exactly, but now we have it uh, for IoT available, and this this chipset comes from the consumer from the from the mobile phone device. Oh, that's and now this Qualcomm oh, enabled wow. it for the industrial world with the industrial roadmap. This is exactly the game change we want to show here. So why why do you think industrial applications would like to use ARM? What is it about ARM that makes them sort of happy to move to it? So yeah, so performance definitely. Performance yeah. is like a, like a high-end Intel here that you can show. Uh, much, much um, uh, lower um, power consumption, but AI engine, I think this is really also the, the point. This chipset has a 12 teraops AI engine inside with four point something oh, watts. That's, that's ridiculous. Now we can really do that's AI ridiculous. on the edge with this low power device. And this, you see, now the, the, the whole thing is a game changer. With with no disrespect to Intel, but what I'm kind of curious about, yeah. do you think that companies like Intel and AMD might be, not struggling, but uh, a bit far behind these days in terms of like AI neuro engines and AI and co-processors and that kind of thing and having lots and lots of low end for uh, low energy cores. So Intel is a great company, so AMD, uh, of course they have nice uh, solutions, but also the, the highest top uh, end. So, so you're going to use them nice. in data centers, exactly, in servers. Exactly, no, but, no but, doubt. But that, even then, that. we're seeing ARM cores being used in servers already. Ah. Microsoft introduced also their new cores for uh, AI uh, data centers. They're all ARM-based. All ARM-based. No, no x86 anymore. And because it, of that, huh? It's frightening. It's amazing to see how well. It's amazing to see yeah. how quickly technology has gone. For the longest time, it was all x86, yeah. Yeah. and in about three it's years, step of finger, it's switched. switched. Yeah, to a, just switch so rapidly. This is what we'll show you. Um, and do, do you think companies like Apple were were able to demonstrate just how effective ARM cores were, which is why now everyone else is sort of moving into that direction as well? So the problem is at the moment is to scale it. Scaling. We're still, still at the very early stage. Yeah. So Avnet, we have the company Tria from, from Avnet that is also producing boards. We're st at the moment, we're st at, at, uh, designing uh, modules, industrial modules with these chipsets. So we will enable Windows uh, IoT as well, Windows 11 on it. And this is exactly, if they use then, uh, a Linux or a Windows, yeah. hey, there's this decision. But here, we really want to enable now yeah. the industrial world with these, this new technology, AI-enabled technology. Yeah. That's exactly what we're doing. So, um, sort of a quick question about the hardware side yeah. and the software side. Um, 
when you have like, uh, uh, let's say like for example, Linux as the distribution, when you tend to deploy that, it's, it's quite, it's headless, it doesn't have a video output, yeah, yeah. SSH into it. Yeah. Is that something you can do with Windows IoT platforms as well? So you can kind of like reduce yeah. the graphics usage Absolutely. and that kind of thing? It makes no big sense because Windows is really designed to have a user interface. Right. That's where Windows and comes from. This is really the strength. And, and where, and where I, as an engineer, I have to be fair, you know, Linux is a great platform yeah. if, if it's like an SSH. But when it comes to GUI yeah, applications, exactly. it can be a bit clunky, exactly. and so exactly. and so Windows is taking that yeah. The, yeah. the 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 years of experience of creating a stable, workable GUI into an into a small IoT exactly. deployment, yeah. so you've still got that ability to work with it. So, is it possible to see uh, any demonstrations with this, or see on the screen here how that's being used? Uh, we do not have a live demonstration here. We have the Cena bench that we can run, of course. Ah, that, uh, can perfect. See it, it on run it. it. On it. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, we have it right here. Um, on, on this side, we can show it directly. So, so for those Cinebench, who are watching this no video, problem. if you're not aware, Cinebench is a uh, it's like a it's like a stress testing for uh, hardware. So where you can you can run like really high renderings. Uh, you run you run lots and lots of video and do tons of report, uh, calculations in the background. So you're really trying to stress. Uh, 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 what the device is actually doing. So well, he's going to run us in a bench, um, uh, sort of like test now, and we can see the performance of this device. And the good thing about Cinebench is that if you have different devices on different platforms, it gives you a really good number to, to cross compare uh, against different architectures. So let's see what we can do with Cinebench. So I just started the, the multi-core one, and you see also here some some special rankings very in. And there you go. So you've got Apple M1s there, you've yeah, got Apple Intel M1. Xeons exactly. there. Yeah, so we're going to exactly. see where we lie yeah, exactly. in this thing. See, so you see you know, the, the Snapdragon platform here now, uh, uh, 980Z. So um, we are pretty, pretty high already in ranking. Now, even though you say like, oh, it's only got a score of 459 against yeah, yeah. this one. But keep in mind, this thing can run for two days yeah, yeah. on 4K footage. So. This is not designed to be a cutting edge server doing tons and tons of processing. It's designed to do good processing for a long time using minimal energy. And also think about that we really talk about the IoT market. Exactly. Yeah. So we have a very dedicated usage sometimes. And yes, we want to have AI possibilities. We have a local, maybe a local LLM running yeah. to do exactly yeah. what, what we want. So this is this is and when you and when you run, and when you run that LLM, you're doing it at minimal energy. So if you've got an exactly. IoT device that needs exactly. to be powered by battery or energy harvesting, it's, it's, it's put somewhere where you can't get access to it. You want to be able to deploy it, leave it, forget about it. And this operating system, along with these ARM cores, will enable that. And you hit the exact point at the moment as, as, and see this as, as a problem. Also, if there's all this AI stuff, when you run the LLMs, the energy you use to run this LLM, this is essential because it's multiplying of uh, all this, this yep. solution. And any kind of such a solution with lowest power consumption to run such a solution, this is great news for all of us. Absolutely fantastic. So just before we wrap up this video, I've got one more question for you. Please. For the audience who are watching this video, if they want to get involved with Avnet Silica Solutions involving Windows IoT and the Qualcomm devices, yep. what would you recommend that they do? Visit our website, Avnet Silica. You will find us immediately. And there you can see this, all the solution. And then I'll always the contact on the website. So contact us. And this is really uh, an open thing. So contact us. We are more than happy to talk to you to find the right solution. Fantastic. And now I've got to go buy one of these laptops. <laughs> thank you ever so much. So, Will. Thank you. Thank you.